live from the largest news team on local television. The combined resources of KCOY 12, Central Coast Local News, and KEYT News Channel 3. Your news starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us live tonight at 11. The chimney fire continues to burn near Lake Nascimento and Cal Fire says 19,909 acres have burned. Containment is holding at 35%. 46 structures have burned and 330 homes and buildings are currently threatened. Evacuation orders have been issued for Christmas Cove and the Oak Shores community. And an evacuation warning has been issued for the Bryson Hesperia community that spans and slow in Monterey counties. The South Shore, Rancho, Del Lago, and Cal Shasta areas are also back under mandatory evacuation orders after being called off around noon. Sean Larson has been covering the fire all day and joins us live from where evacuees were hoping to stay in Paso Robles. Sean? Tracy, yeah, the Christmas Cove and Oak Shores communities were evacuated late this afternoon, leaving several families looking for lodging this evening. I spoke with one of those families earlier tonight. Well, we need to find a hotel. David Volk is visiting from Boston. He met up with six of his Southern California relatives for a family getaway in the Oak Shores community, an area that was evacuated Saturday afternoon, just minutes from the chimney fire near Lake Nosimeno. The Volks were out wine tasting Saturday. We came back and we were told that the community had been evacuated. The Volks have had this trip planned for months. We were able to get back to the home, grab our keys, grab, frantically grab everything, and then we had to get out of there very quickly. The Volks are now looking for somewhere to stay for the remainder of their trip. We're here at this place. Turns out they don't have vacancy. But Volk says they're the lucky ones. We uh, can hopefully find a place to stay tonight. We're just, of course, concerned about the many people who's Homes are in danger. We're lucky that we were renters and we'll have the opportunity to go home. And fire officials say they hope to have this fire completely out by August 29th. Reporting live in Paso Robles, Sean Larson. Tracy, going to toss it back to you. Thanks, Sean. And we'll have more of your coverage a little later tonight. The Ray Fire smoke filled the sky high above Santa Barbara's backcountry today. That fire started Thursday off Paradise Road near White Rock Campground. It exploded overnight to 10,732 acres. Containment fell to 10%. And smoke from the Ray Fire could be seen for miles as it billowed high into the sky. And we have some time-lapse photography that you'll see momentarily when Sean gives us a first look at the forecast. Meanwhile, Elise Martinez reports that the fire is close, but it is moving away from populated areas. Winds are pushing the Ray Fire into the National Forest and Santa Barbara's backcountry. We went deep into the fire zone and saw smoking trees and large swaths of burned vegetation. The Ray Fire nearly quadrupled in size overnight. That's testament to how dry these fuel conditions are out here. The fire is making a run away from communities, but the U.S. Forest Service says it's still burning through habitats for endangered species. Resources at the Ray Fire are stretched thin because of several other fires burning in California. We have a lot of vegetation that's burning right now, but it's not near homes. We're going to send the resources, you know, as a priority towards the ones that are burning towards more populated areas, towards more infrastructure. But aircraft has been secured and is overhead. Even though the fire is not an imminent threat to communities, firefighter safety is still a concern. The number one priority is getting every firefighter home safely, whether you're in the air, whether you're on the ground, we want you home safely. And we're not going to run any unnecessary risks putting this fire out because the dangers from the trees, trees are falling. We want to be careful. We want to make sure the crews are safe. And the Blue Cup Fire in San Bernardino County has burned 58 square miles. More than 200 buildings have burned there, half of them homes. But people are returning to Wrightwood, and dozens of pets have been rescued. Crews now have the upper hand there, with a line around 68% of that fire. Now back to the chimney fire and how it's impacted the Hearst Castle. That's where we sent Sean Larson earlier today.
We got here and found out it was closed. Lisa Swiderski and her family traveled all the way from New Jersey with the hopes of seeing the Hearst Castle for the first time. It's nothing you can do about it. It just is what it is. Stuff happens. Swiderski's daughter was actually on her way from Los Angeles to meet up. They should be here in about a half an hour. They also live in New Jersey outside of Philadelphia. It was a similar story for many tourists. The Swiderskis are one of hundreds of people that had to find other plans after Hearst Castle officials made the call to close the historic museum early Saturday morning. The chimney fire is estimated to be about three miles away. There is world-renowned art inside. We have uh, tapestries, uh, furniture. California State Parks runs Hearst Castle. They've also made the call to be closed Sunday. With the amazing art collection inside, uh, we, we do have contingency plans in place in, in case we need them due to the fire. Cal Fire has set up a special base right here at Hearst Castle to protect this nearly 100-year-old structure. We now have the Hearst Contingency Group. So we have resources here, firefighters and firefighting equipment doing some pre-planning here in the Hearst area. Fire investigator Amber Anderson says heavy overnight winds pushed the fire about 2,500 acres closer to the iconic monument. Posing a threat towards the Hearst Castle and some of the infrastructure here on the Hearst property. I'm a little disappointed, but I just hope that everything turns out okay. And you certainly can see the smoke all the way down the coast. It is time now for Sean Quinn in our first Alert Weather Center, and he's going to show us some of that time-lapse photography. Sean? Yeah, just a beautiful shot right there. As you can see, Tracy, looking uh, from TV Hill, basically Santa Barbara, looking back to the backcountry, and you can see again, look at that, a pyrocumulus cloud. The very tops of it get a little white, which might be a little confusing, but that's basically moisture condensing, getting pulled up with all that heat and smoke, and eventually it starts to cool off rapidly, so it it turns into, uh, it condenses, and you get a little bit of a cloud there on top of the smoke. So really a phenomenon that's um, both beautiful and ominous all at once, as you can see right there. All that smoke drifting off across the region. Now, current conditions, not that bad as far as the firefight goes. Um, about as good as we could hope for, 62 degrees in and around the chimney fire. And as we head a little farther to the south, you can see humidity values pretty high up. Good news there. And then around the Ray Fire, look at that. We've actually jumped the humidity up, getting a little bit of marine layer trying to work its way in uh, into the San Ynez Valley. It may not quite get there, but at least uh, it's kind of knocking on the door. And again, helping to sort of boost that humidity. Wind, fortunately, has been less than 10 miles an hour for the most part, although some reports of gusts below some of our passes and canyons, uh, perhaps that could be in the backcountry as well in some areas that we don't really have monitoring sites, but it looks like things are pretty good, at least as good as we could hope for. Widespread 50s, and you got your 60s along the south coast. A little bit warmer inland and around Ojai, 73 degrees in Cuyama, and I'll be back in just a moment, Tracy, to talk about the forecast. We do have some good news. Uh, no real big shocks to the system, but there is a little warming trend coming in. Of course, we'll talk more about the smoke and hopefully some better firefighting conditions in the near future. Tracy? All right, thank you, Sean. In other news, a young Solvang man died in a crash in Buellton overnight. It happened just after midnight. The California Highway Patrol says the 24-year-old driver of a Nissan Frontier hit a tree off Santa Barbara Avenue just south of Alamo Pintado Avenue. Officers did not know whether alcohol played a role in that crash, and the driver has not been identified. This Isla Vista Foot Patrol, or the Isla Vista Foot Patrol, is requesting the public's help to catch some thieves. They're trying to solve a burglary. It happened at about 1.40 this morning at the Keg and Bottle Liquor Store. That's on the 900 block of Embarcadero del Mar. They found out it happened when the business was closed by watching time stamp surveillance video. Anyone with information is urged to call 911. A boy who went missing near a popular ice cream store last night has been found. Santa Paula police say that the five-year-old may have been upset about his family's plan to move. Police only said he was found safe and sound today and returned to his family. Ventura County has its first confirmed case of the Zika virus. The Public Health Department says the infected woman is not believed to be pregnant. They will be monitoring her and her symptoms. Officials say the woman was diagnosed after traveling to Latin America. The virus is linked to that travel and not local mosquitoes. But health officers are recommending that adults and children older than two use DEET or insect repellent. They say mosquitoes usually bite at dawn or dusk and they urge people to eliminate standing water where they lay their eggs. This marks the 69th Zika case confirmed in California. 
The Oxnard Police Department made an unusual arrest. Officers went to a domestic violence call yesterday and found a man, they say, hiding in his dryer. The department tweeted out photos saying, quote, gonna be one of those nights, which the hashtag static cling. They arrested the man in the dryer for domestic violence charges. The race for the White House doesn't take a break. Still to come, we'll check in with Donald Trump and see what he's up to and what his rival Hillary Clinton is up to this weekend, too. That's at Live at 11 from KUYT News Channel 3 and KCOY 12 Central Coast News. News Channel 3. We're in your community. KUYT Your classrooms. We're right there with you, supporting local causes. And you are a part of the family. K-E-Y-T family. You're sending us shots of your family. Your view of news from your neighborhood. We're in this together, so come on. Upload to your social media and hashtag K-E-Y-T family. Today we're going to be comparing these two truck beds. Let's start over here with this aluminum bed. Put your toolbox up here. Whoa. That's a big hole. That is unbelievable. Now, let's check out the roll-formed steel bed of the Silverado. Same spot, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. This summer, find your tag and get 16% of MSRP cash back on select remaining 2016 Silverado pickups in stock. That's over $7,500 cash back on this Chevy Silverado. Visit your Central Coast Chevrolet dealers. E-bikes, electric bikes of Santa Barbara is having a sale. All 2015 models must go. 2016 German-made high bikes equipped with Yamaha motors now in stock. Imagine the places an electric mountain bike can take you. Located on the corner of State Street and Haley with a full-service department, we have the largest selection of electric bikes on the West Coast. Ride an electric bike and change your life. Every day, the oil companies pollute our air, putting their profits ahead of our kids' health. <laughs> now they're trying to weaken California's clean air laws. I'm Tom Steyer. We've had a million kids get asthma. We need to send the oil companies a message. Tell your legislator to stand up to the oil companies and protect our clean air laws. Don't let the oil companies put their profits ahead of our kids. On the campaign trail, Donald Trump has been trying to reach African-American and Hispanic voters. At a rally in Virginia, Trump said the Republican Party must do better and that he would do better. Despite past comments, he said he wants to be an inclusive party. He also met with the National Hispanic Advisory Council today, but still lags behind his rival among minorities in the, those polls. Hillary Clinton isn't just on the campaign trail. She's raising money at private events. She campaigned in Iowa, Ohio, and Pennsylvania this past week. Her voter registration efforts and policy pitches aren't getting as much attention, though, as her rival's campaign shakeup. She says it has overshadowed talk about her emails. And a longtime pet rescuer in Atascadero is under arrest for animal cruelty tonight. Animal services officers in San Luis Obispo say they found more than 40 dogs in her home, and some were confined to crates without food or water. KCOY's Sean Larson has been following that case. Here are some of the 44 dogs that animal services seized on Thursday morning. They say about half of them had physical or medical conditions and were living in filthy and overcrowded conditions. The result is that the animals wind up being impacted, the environment deteriorates, and they wind up suffering. Eric Anderson is the manager of San Luis Obispo County Animal Services. The dogs are temporarily being held here. Whether they really care, for, care about them, the issue is that they're not able to care for uh, that many animals. Anderson says many of the dogs have bite wounds. Untreated skin conditions and infections, some dogs with neurologic problems, dental disease, fractured teeth, ear problems. Atascadero police arrested the owner of the property, Suzanne Solin. She wouldn't talk to us on camera, but says she was a registered dog rescuer for 16 years and that she's rescued and found homes for hundreds of dogs. Neighbors are shocked. There were just like cops everywhere and they were asking me about my neighbor. Nick Velsey is Solon's neighbor. He says many people on their street know her and support her. She's actually a really nice lady. I've known her since uh, I was about five. She uh, has been rescuing dogs since I've known her. Velsey says Solon might have taken in more dogs than she could handle. She literally spends all her time like caring for the dogs. 
and uh, taking care of them and finding homes for them, like that's all she wants to do. Our objective with all these animals is to treat them, get them recovered as much as possible. Sean Larson, KCOY 12, Central Coast News. And just ahead, we'll check on the flooding and rescues in Louisiana. Also, a look at Depot Day coming up tomorrow in our area. Isaac Hu has mastered gravity-defying moves to amaze his audience. Great show. Here you go. Now he's added a new routine, making depositing a check seem so effortless. Easy to use Chase technology for whatever you're trying to master. Isaac, are you ready? Yeah. Chase, so you can. What's on your bucket list? On September 10th, the third annual Glow in the Park, a hot air balloon glow and dinner dance will take place in beautiful Ealings Park, taking health care to new heights. Doctors Without Walls, Santa Barbara Street Medicine, invites the community to take part in an extraordinary experience. This unique event features tethered balloon rides, a gourmet field dinner, and dancing to the talented tribute band Hollywood U2. Hurry, get your tickets now at spglowinthepark.org. I shop and cook for my mom every week. I help my dad pay his bills. I take my wife to the doctor. Am I a caregiver? Are you caring for a senior parent, spouse, or friend? Do you spend time helping with meals, shopping, or personal care? Are you stressed? Do you have less time for yourself? You are not alone. Nearly one in six people in Lombok are caregivers. Visit caringtogetherlombok.org or call 925-9554. Fox 11 News at 10. The most watched news at 10. The largest news team on local television, wherever you are, up and down the coast. Plus, your first alert wake-up weather, all before you head to bed. Local news every night at 10, live over on Fox 11. Join us at 5 a.m. We're going to have all your updates from over the weekend. You know, it's a new work week. We'll have your forecast. We want you to grab your coffee and join us Monday at 5. As Louisiana rather starts to recover from devastating flooding, some people are being recognized as local heroes. Law enforcement say a mother and daughter received a Citizens of Valor reward for saving a four-year-old boy whose grandmother died in the flooding. And Jenny Thacker and Jesse Kingen were chest deep in flood water last Sunday when they rescued a boy they saw clinging to a branch. It's nice to have a good wow, story incredible. out yeah, and I have there. the map to show uh, oh, the current do. weather there, and you can see. Good news is, Tracy, it's quieted down considerably. I mean, they had 20 inches of rain over four wow. days, which is pretty much can double. Can we have one inch? We've, yeah, we've had, double, we've had uh, less than, what, you know, a quarter of that in the last two years. I mean, it's right. just crazy. And you can see right there, they're still under the threat of more rain, likely through about Monday or Tuesday, uh, Shreveport. Uh, Baton Rouge and Narlands, all of them showing at least a little bit of a chance for some showers here and there over the next uh, five to seven days. So it looks like they'll get more rain, but hopefully nothing like they've seen. And as you just kind of alluded to, Tracy, wouldn't it be great if we could get some of that? Um, even an inch, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not likely until hopefully uh, as early as November, if we're lucky, if we want to follow historical averages. And again, current conditions about as good as we can hope for as we try to get some moisture in there in the form of a marine layer. You can see uh, doing that in some areas, which is good news. And it looks like the wind is really cooperating. Um, hearing the stories, it sounds like the wind um, the last couple of days helped to really blow up the ray fire and as well the chimney fire, pushing it toward um, in all different directions as winds being onshore and in nature. And you can see 50 along the central coast, a little warmer to the south coast. Um, inland area is starting to cool down as well. Kuyama is still a little bit warm, but you're doing okay getting down to the low 70s. And again, in that fire area, we're still seeing uh, fairly light winds, and that would be di- even up toward the, uh, the chimney fire and as well the ray fire. It looks like the wind is about as good as we could hope for. Uh, obviously, no wind at all would be perfect, but it looks like the winds are less than 10 miles an hour. And again, trying to get a little bit of marine layer into the uh, mix, which is really, really important. Also seeing a little bit of monsoon sneaking in. Now, that can be also dangerous because if we get a bolt of lightning out of that and it hits a dry area that's no rain, 
Um, you can get dry lightning, lightning fires, which of course in California we do not need, absolutely do not need to see another fire. Now marine layer at the lower levels, that will be our main weather focus. It has been, it seems like, for much of this summer, a very quiet summer for the most part, just a couple of little um, uh, up and downs with the, uh, a couple of small heat waves. And that pattern should continue. A moderate onshore flow weakening slightly early next week. The monsoon could sneak into some portions of California. It doesn't, doesn't look to affect us, but we'll keep an eye on that. And at the lower levels, again, we're going to watch that marine layer kind of ebb and flow over the next couple of days. It looks like it backs off for all all but the Central Coast beaches by the afternoon on Sunday, and then it comes roaring back again once we head toward early Monday. And your overnight forecast, a mix of sun and clouds, uh, and of course tomorrow we'll watch the smoke. Obviously that might be a, a, a hindrance to many over the next several days. There's no official watches or advisories, but that could change at the drop of a hat, all because of where that smoke decides to kind of fall back to earth, and the wind could blow it into your neighborhood if you smell it. Uh, just be advised to take it easy because it's, it means that the air is obviously very, very poor. A little bit of surf out there kicked up out of the southwest. Good news there. So kind of a mix in the channel and as well to the North Point Conception. And your forecast shows very, very quiet weather. A little warming toward, say, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And that goes for just about everybody. We cool off as we head toward next weekend. Um, so again, we're maybe, uh, you know, a degree or two below normal. Then we kind of go a little bit above. Mm -hmm. We go back. If we didn't have the fires, I'd say, boy, aren't we lucky. Right. And the weather is just perfect. And let's all just go ahead and enjoy it. But, boy, I would love to see those fires go away completely. This fire season is nothing short of phenomenal. I mean, just I scary. It scary. is scary. Lucky that it's been safe, at least, for the crews out there. Yeah. So. Um, now, if you're looking for something to do tomorrow, how about Depot Day? The South Coast Railroad Museum, located at the historic Lita Depot, is hosting the event tomorrow from 11 to 4. Just head on over to 300 North Los Carneros for train rides and hand car rides. There will also be plenty of things for kids to do when adults can bid on silent auction items, too. A cute event for the family. The Rams are ready. Coming up, Center de Los Santos talks to tailgaters and then reports from the sidelines of the L.A. Coliseum. That's coming up live at 11 from KYT News Channel 3 and KCOY 12 Central Coast News. Finally, my own space. It looks dreamy. And I didn't blow my budget. I found it all at Ross. Organized. And I saved so much. Genius. <laughs> see, you gotta go to Ross. Here you go. Can't wait to see what this baby can do. morning. <laughs> you remember my parents' anniversary? Wow. Get 0% financing for 72 months or choose $2,500 customer cash on the 2016 Camry or lease for only $189 per month plus tax. Toyota. Let's go places. United Way of Santa Barbara County presents the 25th annual Day of Caring. The largest one-day volunteer event in the Tri-Counties. On Saturday, September 17th, show your community you care and spend the day volunteering at a wide range of important projects in your neighborhood, in Santa Barbara and Ventura Counties. Make a difference this year. Lend a hand, build a community, sign up today. Learn more at unitedwaysb.org. The Unity Shop, celebrating 100 years of serving hard-working families on the path to self-sufficiency. Every single year, nearly 12,000 local children visit the school clothing and supply store at the Unity Shop. Then, they get to go to school with new clothes, with all the school supplies they need, and most importantly, with dignity. And your support not only makes it possible, it's making our community the model of compassion and support. Find out more at unityshop.org. What's big right now? You are in the latest looks from Ross. Big style, big brands, teeny tiny prices. Like this outfit, $58 at department stores. But if you want it for less than $36, you got to go to Ross. A big day for L.A. Rams fans. It's the last preseason football game at the L.A. Coliseum before the actual season kicks off. And that's where sports anchor Senere de Los Santos spent her day. 
That's right, Tracy. We're at the Los Angeles Coliseum where the Rams will be sharing this stadium with USC until their stadium is built. Now, this is the last preseason game until the Rams hit the road, and you know the fans came out for this one. This is our fan club, yes. This is it. We're about 200 members deep. Vincent Delgado from Los Angeles has waited 22 years to put this fan club together that only took him three months. You know what? All it is is just a whole bunch of Ram fans that share the same passion. And we all just got together and this is who we are. He wasn't the only one excited to celebrate and tailgate in the Rams' last preseason game at the Coliseum this season. I've been, you know, dreaming about this for 10 years, so I'm so happy that we finally, you know, got a team. And uh, Juliet can now uh, see a Rams team and grow up. We're excited for the new stadium coming up here in three years. Rams fans are coming off an exciting 28-24 to preseason victory over the Cowboys last week. It was monumental. It was historic. It was something that, like, we haven't seen for 22 years here. And to have a record-setting crowd in a preseason game and everybody that was here, even though it was a preseason game, it meant a lot to us to win. Win or lose, these fans are excited to have the NFL back in Los Angeles. If you haven't experienced an NFL game or even a college game at the Coliseum, it's a great experience whether you're a Rams fan or a Trojans fan. you got to come to the game and enjoy it. Let's head out to the game. The Rams hosting the Kansas City Chiefs, and we'll pick it up in the first quarter. Chiefs leading at 7 to nothing until this. The give to Todd Gurley, and he rumbles in for the score. That's his first touchdown in Los Angeles. Game tied up at 7. Now a little bit of drama right before the half as the Chiefs lead at 17 to 14. Jeremy Macklin and LaMarcus Joyner get into a fight. Now they are both ejected from the game and it was a close one folks. In the fourth Rams Malachi Malcolm Brown that is with the catch goes in 10 yards for the touchdown. LA Rams go on to win it over the Chiefs 21 to 20 for their second straight win. Again, this was the last game at the Coliseum. The Rams will now hit the road first in Denver, then in Minnesota, and it will all be televised on our sister station on KCOY 12. For now, I'm in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. Senator Ida Los Santos, back to you. Football season has begun. A panda party is on coming up. One of the cutest baby bears celebrates a birthday. That's just ahead. In 1803, a man bought the territory of Louisiana for 42 cents an acre. That was the greatest deal ever, until I made this one. Now you can get my jumbo breakfast platter for just $2.99. Take that, history. Scrambled eggs, eight mini pancakes, a hash brown, and your choice of bacon or sausage. It's the greatest deal since the Louisiana Purchase. Sort of. The jumbo breakfast platter, just $2.99 for a limited time. Value done my way. Welcome to Sit and Sleep's News Reviews. Let's hear what real customers are saying about their experience at Sit and Sleep. I bought my mattress here a few months ago and I'm still super happy with it. That's awesome. Let's hear another one. I'm so happy with what I selected and the service I received. It was a great experience. That's what I'm talking about. Sit and Sleep customer service is superb. I think I'm blushing. I would never think to go anywhere else to purchase a mattress. I love that. This has been a snooze review from Sit and Sleep. With this level of intelligence, it's a supercomputer. With this grade of protection, it's a fortress. And with this standard of luxury, it's an oasis. Introducing the completely redesigned E-Class. It's everything you need it to be, and more. Lease the E300 for 549 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Every day, the oil companies pollute our air, putting their profits ahead of our kids' health. <laughs> now they're trying to weaken California's clean air laws. I'm Tom Steyer. We've had a million kids get asthma. We need to send the oil companies a message. Tell your legislator to stand up to the oil companies and protect our clean air laws. Don't let the oil companies put their profits ahead of our kids.
Happy birthday, Bebe. A panda celebrated his first birthday today. That is what's happening at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. The panda party is for the panda cub, Bebe. And they had a traditional Chinese ceremony, and a sweet taste of honey came with it. The zoo placed three banners with symbols painted on them in the panda yard, and the poles supporting the banners were slathered in honey. Mm -hmm. The pandas were also given cakes made of frozen, diluted juice. Yeah. That is just the cutest mother and baby panda say, ever. He not, like he's not enjoying his day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we have to go and look at weather, of course. Um, you know, Tracy, we've been talking about the smoke. Um, people did call into the station. They asked, are there any official advisories to, to the, uh, the smoke? Now, that could change at, the, at a moment's notice. It stays mainly to our north and east for right now. But again, if it does change, you'll see the temperatures tomorrow look great. Everything looks good. A little bit of fog, beach, okay. the whole bit, but then... And we leave you with a quick look at KJE's end of summer concert at Pershing Park. Our own John Palmentary MC'd the